Hey, Larry Mednick here with Evolution Aircraft. Uh, we got Anthony and his new Revolt, and uh, we're gonna do a real-time breakdown on it. So if you look, this is our Rival X wing. This is not our quick fold wing. This is gonna take a little bit of time to do. And I don't think we have any other real-time videos of the Revolt with the uh, high-performance double surface wing and uh, with the roll cage. So we're gonna show you how all that comes apart and uh, how that goes. Anthony's gonna uh, help me out. What we've got here on the ground to prep us, by the way, is we have our dolly cart, we've got <laughs> our gas charge lift assist, and we've got our optional prop covers. So uh, we're gonna get started here. Anthony, I'm going to give you the prop covers if you wanna go ahead and put these on real quick. So what I'm doing over here while he's getting that last uh, blade cover on, he's got a lot of blades there, is I am putting the gas charge mass lift assist on. And so we just line it up. We have a speed pin and that is ready to go. That's going to help us to lift or in this case to lower the wing down without having to hold up all of the weight of the wing. So this comes in here and goes there really quite easily. Now, I don't know if you can see up top, I've got a light here for the roll cage, and I'm gonna disconnect this. This simply unthreads. Um, pretty basic. You can climb right up on these revolts. And uh, once you unthread that, you just wiggle it apart, and now that's disconnected. We've got a light down here as well. We're gonna disconnect that here. Now we've got two speed pins back up at the top. Uh, climb back up, I'm gonna pull this one. And pull this one. Again, they come right out. And now I'm gonna flip this light up like so. I'm gonna go ahead and pull this out of here. And now if you stand back so you get the whole idea, this is, uh, we're gonna disconnect the control bar. Something I, uh, and this is our special uh, control bar lock. It uses Velcro that goes around the same direction and then you just flip this out of the way. All right, so go ahead and put that. And then I'm gonna just pull like so. And that's it, this roll cage comes off that easy. There's no tools, nothing, and just set it to the side. You wanna make sure you have somebody to be able to hold the wing, especially if there's yeah, any kind of wind. Or you can tie the wing back with the seat belt if you need to, so the front seat belt to the back. Uh, in this case, Anthony's doing a great job. Um, next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna slide our little dolly cart underneath. And so you basically just get it lined up we're gonna lift right here and then just slide it under the foot that easy. Next, I'm gonna climb back up. I'm gonna pull our two speed pins here. And what's really cool about the geometry on this is you notice and the, the pins, pins are out. Right up there. Right here. Pins are out, but the wing's not falling down. The mass is an over center, which means that gravity is keeping it up. And if the wind comes or something like that, then my gas charge shock's just engaged, and my mast is now over center. The cart is designed so you can put your feet right here. And the only thing you really need to know about this is I'm gonna take off our Velcro, or I put this down. Take that off. Now I have to pull it down, I'm pulling. And about here, it's weightless. So here, and then I just lower the control bar into the cradle, like so, just like that. Now once I've done that, we're going to take our stop and we're gonna move this out. That crosses over on top and that's our wheel stop. So now we've gotta tie it down. So we've got a ratchet strap and there's no right way to do this, but what we're looking to do is tie the front wheel down, but more importantly, we're wanting to tie the front wheel forward because when we fold the wings, it's gonna to wanna to kick the cart and have the front wheel roll off. Right now, it doesn't wanna go anywhere because the wings aren't folded, so everything, gravity's working pretty well. So once the wing's down, uh, we can tie the nose wheel down. Uh, we just need to make sure it's tied down before we fold the wing. So I'm gonna go ahead and Remove the nose cone, and we can tuck the nose cone into the leading edge. 
like so. And this is where it'll stay for the, the trip. And now what we're gonna do is we're gonna remove our tip batten. I'm gonna slide this one out, bring this one out. And now we're gonna disconnect the bungee cords. And I can actually pull out my undersurface battens. There's a lot of battens on these double surface wings. So that's part of people are always asking, well, wh why does that wing take so much longer than the quick fold wings? Well, the quick fold wings, you're pulling out seven battens. This one here, you're not pulling out seven. You're not pulling out 14 or 21. You're pulling out about 40 battens. So there's just a whole lot of battens that need to be removed. Now from here, we can uh, bring our sprog in. Bring this sprog in. And now we can remove upper surface battens. So that's done like this. Pretty simple. And people often ask, they're like, oh, well, is it harder to put the batten in than it is to take it out? And so here it is in forward motion. You put this on, you put this on, put your thumb through here, put this over, and now that's in. So it is a little bit quicker coming out, but not much. Uh, build time versus takedown time, not a lot of difference, I don't think. Uh, not more than a minute or two. Uh, now, you don't want to go in too far because we're still hauled back. What I'm gonna do right now is I'm gonna go ahead and remove the antenna for height issues. So the trailer is probably not this tall. And so this should be done by hand. You just take this off. You can use a wrench, but you shouldn't have to use a wrench on the antenna. And we'll go ahead and do the other side right now. So again, we always wanna start with the tip batten. Let me show them the tip batten. So you have a dual tip batten on this wing. So you have the one on the bottom. And the one on the top is totally different than the one on the bottom. This one folds. And when it straightens, don't put your finger here. All right. Now we'll undo the bungee, undo the bungee. We can go ahead and pull these undersurface battens out. Again, you know, the single surface, you don't even have under surface battens, and you certainly don't have this many upper surface. I'm gonna bring that sprog, folds in, inboard sprog, folds out, and you can see this really came down to a workable height where I can reach everything a lot better. It's not over my head, I'm not particularly tall. This is another technique if you uh, pull all the knots out, then what you can do is you can literally pull the battens out two at a time. And when you pull two battens at a time, it goes a little faster. Just get my finger in there. So you pull out, out, out. So it goes a little quicker that way. And now that we've pulled out the outboard upper surface batten, now we're ready to take the haul back loose. And these are still all stringed and in. Yep. So we're gonna just go ahead and take the haul back off. You can see it's a pretty soft pull. Um, these are not very difficult to haul back. So I can do this one-handed. So it's a pretty loose wing. All right, but let's just stop because we don't wanna forget to tie down our nose wheel. So we're gonna go back to the nose wheel. We're gonna take our strap. And there's no wrong way to do this. Um, we just basically need to make sure that the nose wheel stays down and forward. When we fold the wing back, the trike is gonna try to roll backwards off the cart. So we just need to make sure that we've got this on here in such a way, you notice I'm wrapping around the control bar, that's gonna keep the control bar down. So instead of using extra straps, we're just using one strap to go around. Nothing real special here. You don't have to do it this way, but so long as you're basically getting it done, we come under, around this member here, and basically come back around here, and get all that nice and tight, and so we've got this guy here, 
I'm gonna put this around here. And so I'm gonna come up here around my axle. And now I'm finally coming back. So it's it's quite a spider web and um, there's no wrong way to do it. Get my ratchet lined up here, feed my strap through. And uh, we'll go ahead and tighten it up. So make sure I don't have any twist in there. I don't like that. There we go. And just start cranking along. And you can see, watch the tire. I'm pulling that tire onto my stop. Now, this is like one piece. And now it's safe to be able to fold the wing. But before we can fold the wing, we need to remove all of the upper surface battens, except for the very root batten. So on this wing, that's a, the number 14. We still want to remove the string. So this is the 13, here's the 14. I'm taking the string off, but I'm leaving the 14 in. See how loose the wing is, because the haul back is disconnected. And now we pull them out two at a time. And then we'll go to the other side. And what you want to make sure too is that you double check the wing for undersurface battens particularly. I'm guilty of it all the time. Start to fold the wing and there's still an undersurface batten in here. So I didn't take any of these root battens out yet. So I'm gonna go ahead and pull those before I forget about them but there are a lot of battens. Having said that, if you drive somewhere, you know, three, four hours away and you're gonna set up for the weekend, having a double surface wing shouldn't deter you. But if you're gonna be flying and putting this in a hangar or a trailer, I should say, and you have to build it and fold it every time, this is just not the wing in my opinion. Our quick fold wings, they come in different sizes, different speeds and uh, they all fly really great. This one just gives you the big speed range, which is 50 to 80 miles per hour. Gives you the capability to run really cool things like roll trim here and speed trim, which I'm gonna show you in just a second. Because before we can fold this, it's very important that we remove the, uh, the speed trim. All right, so that is the last batten on this side. We're gonna go back and check for more undersurface battens on the other side. And uh, I think we've got them. Oh, there's one. See, I uh, forgot to pull it. So very easy to move out. We're gonna move over to the nose area. And this is where the electric trim lives. We got three zippers, two that go sideways, and then one right down the, the center. And uh, the first thing I'm gonna do, it's gonna open that up. You can see what's going on there. First thing I'm gonna do is disconnect my power cord to the trim, just let that hang. Next thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna remove the actual trim. So I'm gonna just pull this out of the way. It's very important, you have to pull these two battens out. So watch what happens, ready? You almost hear the click. So now I'm gonna remove a safety, taking off a hand nut. And basically only one bolt holds this, this trim motor in. So as soon as you get this nut off here, I pull this bolt and now it's loose. With that said, we got unvelcro. And now we can work on this a little bit better right here. Pull the pin and that's it. Our trim has been removed. There is one more step. And that step is we need to run this back through this pocket. So the cables run inside of the cross tube strap. They run outside of the keel strap. Very, very important. The haul back cable runs inside the keel strap. Very, very important. So with that said, Anthony, if you'll assist me out on that wing tip. Now you can do this totally by yourself. And what you're gonna use is you're gonna use a, a string to connect a string here and on the opposite wing tip. And what that's gonna do for you is it's gonna allow one person to pull both wings back so that you just don't need a second person. Because I have a second person, we'll skip that step. And then Anthony, as soon as you're ready, just go ahead 
and uh, he's gathering up all those battens. Look at all those battens, battens everywhere. But that's what it takes to make a high performance wing that's gonna be able to be solid as a rock at 80 or even 100 miles an hour in a dive. All of those battens uh, equate to uh, a really solid wing and a high performance wing. So just by the trailing edge, walk towards me. And once you get about to right here, what we're gonna do is we're gonna hand this over to the outside and you're gonna start walking it, pulling all the fabric out. And then we're gonna let this in. And that's just sitting right on top of the blade. It's uh, pretty much, it's not putting any weight or it would actually turn the blade. Um, so there's no weight there. Keep pulling that, that surface out. Keep pulling. Let the, let the leading edge in, Anthony. And then continue to pull. There it is. Looking good. Now, if you notice, this isn't as clean as a single surface. It's because we have two different surfaces, two different lengths, and they're unhappy with each other. When you have a single surface, you can roll it up beautifully. And when you have a double surface, it's not going to roll quite the same. So you take a look. Pull this all the way out. I'm going to start my roll. Oh, and I'm also going to take the zipper loose. That's going to relieve that section. And now I'm stuffing the leading edge. You see how, how this looks here? We're going to stuff it. Stuff it. Stuff it. And now it's starting to look pretty good. And stuff it. And so we'll do the other side. And now just step back. We're losing sunlight here. We've been doing this for, uh, I don't know, a good 20 minutes. And, um, but if you look here, this is it. And it is ready to go into a trailer as soon as we uh, roll up the other wing. And then we're going to secure it in the trailer, which we'll show you in a minute. All right, last but not least, we want to just go ahead and put our little tip boots on. You can tighten these extra with the Velcro, make them tighter or looser. And uh, that just tidies this up back here. And then the very last thing that we're going to do before we put it in the trailer is we're going to take our beautiful, and this is standard, uh, that comes with every revolt, it's the uh, waterproof uh, instrument panel cover. And we're going to just go ahead and set that down on top, just like that and now it's ready to go in the trailer. I just released the parking brake and we're gonna just go ahead and pull it in. And here we go. So this is a mobile unit now with the wings folded. We've got a brand new trailer here. We're going to be installing uh, some anchors in it, but first we're going to push the plane in. We're going to get it uh, put where we want it, and that way we can locate our anchors. Now, a couple things. Uh, Anthony, I'm going to have you just go to the back of the trike and uh, push on the actual frame itself next to the propeller. A uh, couple things that we've done is uh, I tied up the trim system, both the power cord and the cable, so that they're not whacking around. And the other thing we did, just to tidy this up, is we put our uh, wing strap around the uh, midsection of the wing. So we did that off camera. And so uh, you'll go around and push. We're going to take it in nice and slow. I also want to point out on the six-bladed prop, and you've got a great example. There's a four-bladed prop. There's the six. So with the four-bladed prop, you've got a lot of open real estate in here to put wings in. When you go to the six-blade, all of a sudden, there's not quite so much space between all of the blades. And uh, depending on the height of your trailer, you can rotate it so one blade is up and that gives you a little more space for the wings. If you have a lower height trailer, you're gonna wanna have the two blades at the top so that you don't have one extra tall blade. So two blades at the top is no taller than the roll cage itself, so we don't have a high point. So that's why we did it that way. I don't know if he has enough height or not, but uh, here we go. We're gonna take it nice and slow. And uh, the cart does a really good job 
of uh, tracking. He's coming nice and slow. We're going to watch that propeller as we get closer. Keep coming, we're looking real good. Okay, You're going to clear. It's all good and clear. You're clear. All right, and then I'm going to just move it over a little bit this way. He also has a dovetail in this trailer. Um, keep coming in. All right, and then I'm going to set the parking brake. That looks real nice. One of the things I like about the Revolt is, and this is what you don't want to do with one of our Revo trikes, is you can actually use, and I'm going to back that up about nine inches, I'm going to use these uh, wheel wells to hold the trike from being able to shift from side to side. So those, those make nice bumpers there. Whereas if you have a wheel pant, you have to be a lot more careful about bringing it in the trailer. We actually rubbed that tire, but it's, it's rubber, so it was not a big deal to just pull it in. So we're going to set our anchors and we'll show you how we tie it down. Alrighty, so while night fell, uh, we just spent about 30 minutes putting in our anchors and we have seven straps that hold this revolt into the trailer. So come on in, show you what we've done. We've got an anchor on each side up at the top and uh, what we use is a number 14 self tapper screw. We went right into the steel or aluminum, uh, but we went into the actual stud or the beam, whatever it's called on a trailer. And uh, we used a pool noodle and we fished it through the strap. And so that pool needle goes underneath the wing and then it goes up to the opposite side anchor. And so we do that in both directions. It's fully symmetrical. And what we're doing is we're pulling in and up. So you can imagine that's the direction this wants to go. Now that only works because of the fact that we have a strap pulling the wing strut out. So this leading edge is actually getting bowed a little bit like it does in, uh, when you set up the wing. Uh, and it, the wings built. So unless this is actually uh, being pulled this way and something's opposing it, this wing strut doesn't support anything unless it can't move. And so this is solid. Now it's lifting on the midsection. We're supporting at the rear section. The wing has good support all the way through. So that's what's kind of holding up our wing. The Revolt is equipped with uh, quick tie down points. So this is a very large tie down point. It's a little over an inch. So you slide your strap through, you anchor back, you anchor forward. So we have four straps on the floor. And then last but not least, we just have a simple strap going over the front of the cart to make sure the nose of the trike can't hop upwards. But 99% of our tie down is, is happening right here. And uh, that's it. So these guys are ready to head home to uh, Alabama. Yeah, One more time, a big thank you. The Revolt's going to its new home in Alabama and then Kansas after. Locking it all down. Make sure it's nice and safe to make the trip home.